you're watching the Venom vlog. Hey, when are you gonna make a Spidey vlog? Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today and this whole week, we're gonna sink our teeth into a graphic novel called Venom, Along Came a Spider. So if you remember correctly about, you know, early season two, I think, or end of season one, we took a big jump ahead in Venom comics. We were getting to a point where we were running out of stuff that wasn't in print anymore. And I only wanted to talk about stuff that you could buy in print so that way you could keep up with the lore and, you know, the backstory of Venom. And at this point in time, uh, Along Came a Spider, I think it was reprinted in like a clone saga book but it wasn't reprinted in a venom book um, and then the hunted and hunger were never reprinted uh, along with the hybrid stories that are included in this book as well so there was a lot that never got printed and i was you know i just didn't want to talk about it unless i knew you guys could get it either digitally or in print format in some way well now all these stories are you know reprinted in graphic novel format so this is really great so there's the artwork there along came a spider this features a handful of stories from Venom's, you know, the end of his 90s career. So we're getting into the end of the 90s because if you remember, we stopped after Planet of the Symbiotes and we jumped ahead to the early 2000s when they kind of brought him back. It was like Howard Mackey and John Byrne and they kind of brought Venom back and he ate the Carnage Symbiote. If you remember all that, we went into discussion all that and then we went right into the Matt Gargan, you know, era of, you know, when the Scorpion became Venom. And uh, and we, we haven't gone back yet. And well, now that everything's in print again, I want to go back to it. I want to revisit it and I want to conclude all the Eddie Brock stuff that was from the 90s. So this is like, this week is part one of two, I guess, of a week long you know, breakdown of the last years of Eddie Brock in the 90s. Uh, so Along Came a Spider is a graphic novel that has the storyline, that's uh, the titular storyline, Along Came a Spider. Uh, it also has two short stories about Hybrid, which is a new character that we're gonna get into here. Not new for a lot of you, a lot of you guys already know who Hybrid is, but we haven't really discussed Hybrid on the channel. So we'll dive into Hybrid. Uh, then there's also a Christmas story that we're gonna talk about. Uh, uh, and then there's the uh, storyline called The Hunted and a storyline called The Hunger, which as far as I know has never been reprinted ever. So it's nice to, you know, get these books again, uh, even though I'm not a big fan of some of them. And you'll see that as we go throughout the week. But uh, that's what we're going to do every day this week. We're going to take one of the short stories in here, one of the mini series from this book, and we're going to break it down. And some of them won't be as long as my normal breakdown videos, because I feel like some of these don't have a lot to them. There's not a lot of meat there to sink our teeth into. Uh, but some of them do have interesting things. And as always, we'll talk about about them but i want to hear what your thoughts so throughout the week make sure you subscribe to this channel and let your comments be known down below so we can continue our conversation down there about what we, what we did like and what we didn't like about these series so in this massive graphic novel called along came a spider like i said there's about five or six short stories in here or mini series that were originally printed you know back in the 90s from marvel comics and the first one we're going to talk about today is called along came a spider so this took place not too long after play of the symbiotes it's during the clone saga or the you know nearing the end of the clone saga where Spider-Man, you know, found out he had a clone, Ben Riley, and then this is during the era where Ben Riley is actually Spider-Man. So Peter Parker has given up the mantle of Spider-Man and given it over to Ben Riley because at this point in the comics, we were told at least that Ben Riley was the real Spider-Man and that Peter Parker, the one we've been reading for all these years, was actually the clone. Yeah, very confusing stuff. Uh, welcome to the world of Spider-Man in the 90s. Uh, but anyway, uh, during that, you know, Ben Riley, we did talk about him before. We did that, you know, Spider-Man uh, Venom versus Backlash and all that, you know, that crossover. Uh, we talked about him there. But in this one, we're actually going to see uh, the rematch that we've been waiting for, which is uh, from The Exile Returns when Scarlet Spider single-handedly beat Venom. He did something that Spider-Man never could. He punched Venom until Venom got knocked out. Uh, and there was no decoys, no, like, tricks, no nothing. Venom didn't let him do it. It was like a full-on battle, and Scarlet Spider proved himself to be a formidable foe against someone like Venom. So uh, I thought that was neat, and ever since then, I'm like, well, they got a rematch at some point, and now they are in the pages of Venom. So this miniseries came out in like the mid-90s, like 96 or so, somewhere around there. And uh, the storyline, though... Is not very deep, unfortunately. I was really looking forward to this. Larry Hama, who wrote it, uh, he did a lot of great G.I. Joe stuff and a lot of great other comics, especially Wolverine. And so I was really interested to see what he was going to do with Venom uh, once he got his hands on him and, you know, writing these stories. And I got to say, for me, Larry Hama is probably one of my least favorite Venom writers because, to me, he just... 
everything surface level stuff. Um, and then he, the artist he teams up with here, like Joe St. Pierre, who I kind of like his stuff in Plan the Symbiotes. I felt like if he's given a good enough script, you know, which Plan the Symbiotes isn't a great script, but there's some moments in it that I feel like have real emotion. And he did a pretty good job conveying some of those emotions in the pages that he drew during that storyline. But in this one, I don't get that feeling. Uh, I am not a huge fan of this book, which is a bummer because I'm a huge Ben Riley fan. So seeing him as Spider-Man actually wearing the mantle and going up against Venom, I was really looking forward to this rematch, especially now that we were like, okay, Ben is Spider-Man. So now it's really Spider-Man versus Venom. Like at this point in the comics, we didn't know Ben was going to turn out to still, you know, to be fake. You know, we, 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 we didn't know that. We didn't know that the tests were changed by Norman Osborn and that he actually wasn't the real Spider-Man. So for me, when I was reading this as, you know, a teenager, I was like, so this is really actually the first time Spider-Man and Venom are meeting, like the real Spider-Man and Venom. And I thought they would treat it as such. And uh, it really wasn't. It was, uh, I feel like, a very phoned-in storyline. It does have a lot of Anne Wang stuff in it, which is nice, uh, because the story starts off and it's Anne and she's, you know, under police protection. And they basically are like, look, we know Eddie's going to call. You know, they're at her house. And they're like, when he calls, you know, we're, we need to find out his location. And Eddie's worried about her because after playing the symbiotes in New York, you know, kind of got trampled on a little bit by symbiotes and everything and the possible invasion he was worried about her and so i was like all right i kind of like that there's some emotion there um let's see where they go with that and then really all they do is they have Eddie Caller, uh, just like the cops want him to. He's pretty much just falling right in line there. And uh, so they, they got him pegged big time. And he calls her up and then sends his symbiote through the phone again, which we've seen, you know, done a couple times, like Carnage Unleashed, and then even before with uh, Anne uh, in, I think, in Separation Anxiety um, or some, some other story. I can't remember. Um, but anyway, he sends his self or his, uh, his other through the phone and the symbiote bonds with Anne. But the weird thing is, is like, all John St. Pierre or Joe St. Pierre does and all Larry Hama does is they treat it like this weird, like perverse thing. Like it's just purely sexual. And I, I wasn't on board with that. I mean, I guess I was like, well, I guess that element is there and it's there if you want to like tackle it or, or touch on it in a story. But I felt like this story just kept going to it all the time. So anytime the suit, like when it goes through the phone and, and it bonds with Anne, she's kind of like in this state of ecstasy, even to the point where the dialogue says it like it's almost like Larry Hama didn't trust Joe St. Pierre to draw it and make that obvious. So he had to say it too. Um, which, you know, as a teenager, I'm like, Hey, you know, talking to my parents and stuff like my mom and like, you know, other relatives, I'm like, what's that mean? And they're like, Whoa, what's going on in Spider-Man? And that's like, yeah, you know, and my first Spider-Man comic was, you know, Craven's last hunt. And that, you know, forbid me to read Spider-Man for a while because that book ended with a suicide. So seeing stuff like that, it was just like, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where sometimes, you know, these guys come up with these ideas or where they want to put certain things in there or make certain things the way they are. I mean, like, I get it. It's like, all right, there's a, maybe there's a little bit of a, you know, sexual element to bonding, you know, with the symbiote and everything like that. You can look at it that way, but I don't know. I, I guess because I'm not on that level of thinking uh that i'm just like I don't, I don't like it to to an extent so um you know i just want you know venom and, and eddie to like talk and kind of be pals it's almost like a buddy cop but it's one body um and then like some body horror you know added on to it something like that is kind of my speed with venom uh but something like that i don't know i wasn't really digging it so even then and even rereading it i'm still kind of like uh, i don't know like that, but that's all they do with it. So it's like, it's one thing if they did it in one scene, I'd be like, all right, fine. But they keep doing it. Every time the symbiote bonds with Anne in this, she's, you know, kind of, you know, into it, <laughs> into it. Um, and I don't know, it, it just, it's, it doesn't work on some level for me. So that's all they do with the storyline. I mean, I don't have much to talk about. Uh, you know, <laughs> Spider-Man shows up, he gets into a fight with Venom. He's like, all right, I heard, you know, on the police scanner that uh, Venom is loose, you know, and the cops are after him. So I'm going to go fight him. And so the two of them get into, uh, you know, a battle a couple times. But then once again, you know, Eddie, you know, calls Anne back, like he, another instance, like they do the same thing twice within two issues. Issue one, he calls her, sends a suit through the phone halfway to kind of bond with her to let her know he's okay you know, without the cops tracing him and then the second issue he sends the suit in full completely to go bond with her so then for issue three you pretty much just have her running around as she venom as you'll see in the artwork popping up and stuff and it's just kind of 
that's it. I mean, she's just so she's running around as she venom for an issue, and then Eddie's like, "All right, now I got to take a cab to go get to her." It's like the most boring story <laughs> told. Like it's one thing in separation anxiety when you had tension build, where it's like the suit's gone and it's kind of weak and it needs to feed on innocent people to get back to Eddie, and and, and then Eddie is like weak because he's breaking, he's trying to break out of that facility, and the other Life Foundation symbiotes are trying to kill him and stuff. And there's like at least some tension there in separation anxiety, but in this one, there's not. It's like Eddie's like, "All right." I got to get in a cab and, and head over to where Anne is now uh, because I'm just a regular guy. And then he sees like a, the cab breaks down or something. And he looks over and sees a motorcycle and he's like, hmm. And then he like steals the motorcycle to like go after Anne. Um, but again, it's like, it doesn't, there's not, no tension. There's nothing really big there. The stakes don't feel that high. Um, and then as Eddie's driving in, like, you know, Anne's like fighting the cops and like Spider-Man's trying to stop her and stuff. But then as Eddie's driving in, some guy just kind of like one of the villains like randomly comes out of a sewer lid and shoots a flamethrower at Eddie and it looks like he's going to kill Eddie and that's how issue three ends and you're like all right and so Eddie's burnt and dead but then Anne goes over at the beginning of issue four holds him in her arms and then just kind of like this I kind of thought was neat but they didn't play on it too much because I was like oh this mirrors what happened in that other storyline where you know Eddie's holding her and he gives her the suit and Sin Sinner takes all or Sinner you know Sinner eats all or whatever um he he gives her the suit to heal her and 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 help her come back and that's what she does in this one she holds him she's cradling him and then she sends the suit and it brings Eddie back and you know heals him up from the burns and stuff like that so I was like all right that's kind of neat that kind of mirrors that you know the Sinner story uh but but uh, Sin Eater story, but it doesn't, uh, but that's it. Uh, but it's done in such like a quick way, one panel, one splash page, and then they move on and then immediately go into the action of like Eddie jumping into a truck, like head on to fight the bad guys. Um, and then they turn the flamethrower around on the guy who was using it and they burn him alive. And uh, that's pretty much the story. And then Spider-Man swings away with the cops that were trying to track Eddie down the whole issue. He actually, uh, you know, or the whole series, uh, Spider-Man actually saves those two cops in the end. And they're like, well, what do we do now? And they're like, well, the place is going to burn. And I guess Venom got away. So, you know, what can you do? We'll just go after him another way, another time. And that's it. That's pretty much how the story ends. So I think Larry Hama, like, he wasn't writing to complete things. I think he was, I think he did have a plan. He was like, look, I'm going to write a couple of these miniseries. So I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to wrap everything up, which I can kind of understand. But when it's a mini series, it's kind of like you want to wrap at least something up. And this one just felt like it was just, eh, whatever. We want to get... Spider-Man fighting Venom again just to sell some books, uh, but we're not going to really do anything with that. We're not going to add any meat to that story. We're not going to have Ben uh, sympathize in any way with Eddie's, you know, problems, and they're not going to connect on any level the way Peter and and uh, Venom or Eddie had like a personal relationship. Uh, you know, Ben isn't, and so they didn't try to set one up or or you know introduce one or nothing like that. They just had you know Venom was like you know Spider-Man was like the villain of the week for Venom in this one, and he wasn't even really the villain of the week. It was just some random dude with a flamethrower and stuff. So uh, yeah, it wasn't great, uh, and it was like the, the cops were kind of bad if you're rooting for Venom, and I don't know. It's it's a pretty messy storyline. Uh, the artwork even is not very good. I like Joe St. Pierre stuff sometimes, but in this one, I just felt like, you know, everyone had a deadline, everyone has a job to do, and they just, they did the minimum effort, even though I'm sure a lot of them put hard work into this. When you just look at it, it when I was a teenager, I didn't really like the story, and even reading it now as an adult, I like it even less, because I'm like, wow, this structurally just doesn't work. A lot of things in it just don't pan out. Uh, some of the setups don't pay off. And then the great, you know, moments that could call back to other stories uh, don't feel earned in in some ways and, and don't feel like they they didn't do much with it they're like oh here there's a quick visual reference and then that's it let's move on uh no emotion or nothing and uh and that's kind of a bummer and i know sometimes these are just like hey does everything doesn't have to be like a, a academy award winning uh, academy award winning drama or anything like that and that's not what i'm looking for in venom but i am in all stories looking for a, a great package you know beginning middle and end a story that is services itself well um and that has interesting moments in it and i just felt like this was lacking in all of those departments uh but that's just my opinion as always i want to hear yours let me know what you think have you read along came a spider if so i'd love to hear your thoughts down below and we'll continue our conversation down there if you haven't definitely pick it up on comiXology i think you can buy the miniseries by itself if you want or you can get the along came a spider graphic novel which is currently out as of july 21st uh, 2019 there is a full graphic novel out there that has this story and all the other ones we're going to talk about through the rest of the week so make sure you stay tuned that you're subscribed so you don't miss out on a single one thanks so much for watching my show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you all in the future peace